labor and delivery should anticoagulant therapy be um, altered during labor and delivery here you can see that vte is at term when vte occurs at term consideration should be given to the use of intravenous unfraction heparin which is more easily manipulated now here you can see that there is an established labor the woman on low molecular weight heparin for maintenance therapy should be advised that once she is in established labor okay or think she's in labor she should not inject any further dose of heparin if she thinks that she is in labor then she shouldn't get any further dose of heparin here you can see delivery is planned either by cesarean section or inject or induction of labor in both situation the low molecular weight heparin should be stopped 24 hour prior to the delivery here you can see regional analgesia. Regional anesthetic or analgesic technique should not be undertaken until the uh, at least 24 hours after the last dose of therapeutic low molecular weight heparin. Now here you can see uh, an explained figure. Low molecular weight heparin should not be Low molecular weight heparin should not be given for four hours after the use of the spinal anesthesia or after the epidural catheter has been removed and epidural catheter should not be removed within 12 hours of the most recent injection. Now the question rises are specific surgical measures required for the anticoagulated patients undergoing delivery by cesarean section? Yes, you can see from this figure that in a patient receiving therapeutic lower dose of uh, therapeutic doses of low molecular weight heparin, wound drain, abdominal and rectus sheath wound drains should be considered as cesarean section, and the skin incision should be closed with interrupted sutures to allow drainage of any hematoma. Now, question rises: What anticoagulant therapy should be employed in the woman at the high risk of hemorrhage? Any woman who is considered to be at high risk of hemorrhage and in whom continued heparin therapy is considered essential should be managed with intravenous unfraction heparin until the risk factors for hemorrhage have been resolved. Now coming to the postnatal anticoagulation issue, how should an anticoagulation be managed postnatally? About this, it's written that therapeutic anticoagulant therapy should be continued for the duration of the pregnancy and for at least six weeks postnatally or until three months of the treatment has been given in total. Before discontinuing treatment, the continuing risk of thrombosis should be assessed. Now, women should be offered a choice of low molecular weight heparin or oral anticoagulant for the postnatal therapy after discussion about the need for the regular blood test for monitoring of warfarin, particularly during the first 10 days of the treatment. Now, here in this picture, you can see the postnatal period, mother and the baby, and a calendar is shown. Uh, this is basically to explain for how long warfarin should be discontinued or it should be avoided. Warfarin, postpartum was warfarin should be avoided until at least the fifth day and for longer in the patient at increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage. Now about the breastfeeding, it is written that uh, women can take both heparin and warfarin during the breastfeeding. Both of these are not contraindicated during breastfeeding. The question arises about the prevention of post-thrombotic syndrome. What measures can be applied to prevent the development of post-thrombotic syndrome? About this, it's written that if the woman takes uh, enoxaparin, low molecular weight heparin, for more than 12 months, there is very low risk of post-thrombotic syndrome. Now, in this figure, you can see the DVT and compression stocking. Following uh, DVT, graduated elastic compression stocking should be worn on the affected leg to reduce the pain and swelling. Clinicians should be aware that the role of compression stocking in the prevention of post-traumatic syndrome is unclear. Here you can see from the picture the um, compression stocking and their role in the prevention of post thrombotic syndrome that is unclear but uh, low molecular weight happen can reduce the risk of the post thrombotic syndrome now coming to the postnatal clinic review postnatal review of the patients who develop vte during pregnancy or in puerperium should whenever possible be be seen in obstetric medicine clinic and join obstetric and hematology clinic in both of these clinics the patient should be reviewed now the last point 
the thrombophilia testing should be performed